Hello everybody, this is Gregory with How I Lost Over 100 Pounds and I've kept it up for 30 plus years. But there should be no hesitation in your weight loss and weight maintenance. Today we're going to talk about the reverse psychology of somebody who doesn't want you to gain your weight back and you're like, you know what, just because you don't want me to gain my weight back, I'm going to eat worse. Now before we begin, if you need help from a weight loss perspective, contact me through the Clarity FM link found here in the episode notes. Also check out my website which has hundreds of articles and recipes, my two books which are on Amazon, and lastly, if you appreciate my content, there's a link for PayPal. And by the way, I have a movie podcast called The Cinema Rag, which you can find on Spotify and Apple. Rate and review that, please. All right, so look, we have an episode here on what to do if your spouse is trying to jeopardize your weight loss. Uh, you've lost weight and maybe they're codependent. They need you to be fat so they can feel like they're the better person or you're eating better and they're still eating junk and so that tempts you to eat junk. This is a kind of a similar episode. Let's say you have somebody in your life who's lost a lot of weight and they look much better than they were before. But they haven't disassociated emotions from food. Food is only supposed to be for physical nurturance. We eat the food to keep us alive. It's not supposed to make us happy, sad, depressed, like we, 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 we put emotion into food. It's not supposed to do that. Or if it's somebody who hasn't, who still has a disordered relationship with food stemming from childhood trauma, whatever it is, it's one of these people, which is a lot of people who yo-yo diet, who crash, they, they, they will crash a diet to get into the bikini or for the wedding or whatever it is. And then you're, you're married to them or it's an extended family, it's your child, it's your parent, whatever. And then you see them after the milestone has been reached are going back to the bad behavior. And why are they going back to the bad behavior? Because this is why yo-yo dieting exists. This is why 80% of people who lose more than 50 pounds gain it back because they just put the band-aid on the wound. You have to address the wound of the disordered relationship you have with food, address the childhood trauma. Either way, but the majority of Americans don't do that, who lose the weight, and this is why they later get it back. So you might tell them that in a constructive way, and in a, in a, and out of charity, hey, you know, I don't, I, I think you're, you're not eating well, or, you know, do you really need that second slice of cake, or whatever, and then they get mad. They get mad. And some of them will even say, you know what, I'm just gonna regain my weight back because the more you tell me or the more you try to control my diet, I'm just gonna gain my weight back. And, I, and that, that kind of statement just is it's so befuddling to me because you know, you know what that sounds like? You know who says statements like that? The eight-year-old, the eight-year-old. Oh, mom, you don't want me to touch that hot stove? Boop! You know, oh, you're telling me not to touch that knife? I'm going to touch it. Or you tell kids, don't don't search stuff on YouTube. Don't search, fill in the blood. What, what do you think they're going to do? Or a new movie comes out. Oh, that's R. Ray. You shouldn't watch that. You tell them not to do it. They're going to do it. That's what kids do. Kids, not adults. Adults should not be doing that. But there are people who are like, oh, you, you're worried about me gaining the weight? I'm going to gain my weight back. How does that make any sense? How does that help you? How does that help you to do that? You worked hard or you crashed, dieted hard, whatever it is, to lose the weight and somehow you're going to get back at your loved one by gaining the weight back. I guess on one level you're getting back at them because maybe they're not going to find you sexually attractive, but ultimately you're hurting you. It's not like you're using your mind to telekinetically make them gain the weight. Right? I'm going to make you gain 50 pounds. It's not like you're doing that. So ultimately, like we talked about with envy and anger, it's a poison you concoct that only you drink. It's the same thing here. I get it. People don't want to be told what to eat or what not to eat. I get that. And I think if you feel to satisfy certain criteria, nobody should tell you what to eat. All right? If you are like Hugh Jackman getting ready for Wolverine or Michael Phelps the swimmer and you got to pack in a lot of calories, I think you've, you've demonstrated that you know how to be in shape. Or if it's somebody who's lost a lot of weight and has kept it off for a long time, they know how to biohack, they know what they're doing. So if, if it's someone who has a proven track record of keeping the weight off, there's no reason to tell them, hey, you're eating too much. But if you have a history of yo-yo dieting, then yes, I think loved ones in your life should tell you that. It's like the broccoli in the teeth analogy, right? Is it true charity to tell them that they have broccoli in their teeth, even though it might embarrass them? Or is it better not to tell them and then they look like a fool 
to everybody around them the whole day. It's the same thing. You've got to be momentarily cruel to be kind. So in the long run, if somebody tells you, hey, I don't think you should be eating that, or why are you getting third servings, fourth servings, I think the better thing is understand where they're coming from. They're worried that you're going to gain the weight back because you haven't demonstrated that you have the tools and the resilience to keep your weight off. So the, the worry is understandable and it's well-intentioned. And so I think a good response is to tell the person, you know, I, I appreciate you being worried about me. Uh, you're right, you know, I haven't kept the weight off for a long time and I need to not associate emotions with food. Like I've mentioned in the episode, there's no reason to have that second serving of dessert. The first serving, sure, we have an episode here. There's no such thing as bad food, good food, you know, whatever, don't label food. We're gonna, we're gonna splurge a little here and there, especially if you're weight maintaining, not if you're losing weight. That's one slice. The second slice demonstrates that you still have a disordered relationship with food and that you shouldn't be eating it. There's no reason to have the second slice of anything. So I think the better thing to do is not get defensive and understand like where they're coming from, why they're saying it. And if they're saying it in a mean way, like you're gonna end up being a farce again, or, you know, of course that's not, that's not in charity. But if they're, if they're saying with kindness, understand where they're coming from. They've seen you work hard to lose all this weight and they don't want you to gain it back because they know that if you gain it back, what are you gonna end up doing? Shame, self-loathing, being angry at yourself, probably being angry at, at, at people in your life as well. And then you're gonna have to work hard to lose it again. And that's why it's just better once you've lost it or lost the majority of it, you work hard to maintain it. And don't get mad at the messenger. Don't kill the messenger. The messenger's trying to help you. And step back and realize that. Guys, post in the comments. I'd like to hear from you. Hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.